we are going to discuss the union operation in relational algebra. So, we shall discuss this one with one example. See, here is a query in plain English. Find the names of all bank customers who have either an account, means savings bank account or a loan or both. That means we are going to get a list of all customers either having the savings bank account or loan account or both. So that is the query. Now we know that if we consider all the schemas, here this borrower is actually holding all customer names who are having the respective, we are having the respective loan, loan accounts. This depositor is holding those customer names who are having the respective savings bank accounts. So borrower and depositor, these two schemas will be required here because they are holding the respective customer names for the loan accounts and for the savings bank accounts. So how to get those names out? It is quite simple. We will be applying the pi operation. Pi means projection operation. So I shall be writing in this way pi customer name operated on borrower. Let us suppose it is producing these three names and then pi customer name operated on depositor. So they will be produced say these three names arbitrarily we have written. So it is not mandatory that they will be having the same number of names. Here we could I could have three names, here I could have 30 names. So that is not an issue. But I do not require these names separately. I want to get them union so that I can get a single set of names. So I shall be writing this one that is a pi customer name operated on borrower union. I shall be writing this one that is pi customer name operated on depositor. So these three names and these three names will be union and then I shall be getting all six names in a list. So that is my output and this is my the respective relational algebraic form and this set is containing all the customer names either having the savings bank account or loan account or both. But one point is very important. Let us suppose I want to do uh, union between two relations R and S. So it will be done that means R union S will be valid if and only if we are having two conditions. First condition the relations R and S must be of the same arity. What is the meaning of the term arity? Arity means number of attributes. That means R and S must be having the same number of attributes. How many attributes we are having here? Only one. How many attributes we are having here? Only one. So that is why we could do the union operation between them. So if the R is having two attributes, then S must be having two attributes. So that is the first condition. The second condition it tells that the domains of the ith attribute of R and the ith attribute of S must be the same for all I. That means if the first attribute is having say domain say varkar or say string, the second attribute is having say domain uh, integer, then also the S will have the first attribute with the domain varkar or string and the second attribute must be of the domain integer type. So then only the union operation can be performed. So I think you are now getting this idea of what is the union operation and how to write it and what is the purpose of this union operation. Uh, we have explained this one with one proper example. Thanks for watching this video.